In this video, we're going to add in some error handling to our form submittal process. Now, one thing I want to make sure is really clear here is that we're not going to attempt to validate the actual inputs that users are entering into the form. We're not going to check to make sure that they entered a number at all. Instead, we're going to use a very similar technique to what we had done back when we were writing some tests around all these contracts. So back when we were writing tests, you'll recall that we put together many different tests where we had some try catch statements. We wrapped the actual contract function calls inside of a try, and then we would add the catch to make sure that they had thrown an error. We can use that exact same technique on these two statements right here. So by watching these two lines of code for an error message or for an error to be thrown, we can capture any case in which one of these lines of codes, code will throw an error. We'll then take that error and we'll place it on the form for the user to see. So we don't have to do individual validation of any of these inputs. We can just watch these two lines and they'll handle all the error checking for us. That means our life <laughs> gets a lot easier. So here's what we're gonna do. Just like on our tests, we're gonna wrap these two lines of code with a try statement, like so. So there's the try, and then we add on the catch as well, and we make sure we catch that error. If we end up with this error object inside the catch statement, that means that something went wrong during these two lines of code. And we want to probably take that error message and display some message to the user on our actual component. In order to get some content on our component, we can use the state system that is included with React. So let's introduce a new property to our state object. Anytime an error is thrown inside this catch block right here, we'll update our state object, and we can use the subsequent re-render to show the error message on our actual form. So I'm gonna add a new property to our state object called error message, and I'm going to default it to be an empty string. Then down inside of our catch statement, if we ever get to this point right here and we have an error message, we can say this dot set state error message is err dot message, like so. This error variable right here is a thrown error, and it has a bunch of different properties describing exactly what just went wrong. In particular, it has a message property. And this is an actual string that can be safely printed into our component. When I say safely, I'm not saying that this is like a human readable error message or something that we should be happy that our users are seeing. I just mean to say that it is a string that we can safely put into a React component without worrying about it throwing an error for some reason. So now that we've got this state property called error message, we want to make sure that it eventually gets displayed inside of our render method somewhere. Now, just as before, when we made use of semantic UI to get some nice styling, I think that we should look at some semantic UI components and see if there are any components out there that can be used to display a nicely formatted error message for our users to read. So I'm gonna go back over to the semantic UI documentation. I'm gonna find the collections section and inside there, I'll find message. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and I think underneath like states or types, maybe variations. Yeah, here we go, variations. I'm gonna find the section labeled negative slash error. So I don't know about you, but this looks like a great way to display an error message to our users. So let's take a look at the code that is used to generate this message. So we can place the message component and we can use a message.header and a paragraph tag inside of that to get something that looks like this. Alternatively, we can look at the next, next example here, which will show us a little bit more compact way of setting up this component. So a more succinct way is to set up the message component and then add the air property and a header property to it. Now this one demonstrates using a list of separate airs here, but we're gonna use a slightly different approach. If we go all the way back up to the top of this page and look at the props list, you'll notice that one of the props on here is content. And this is a shorthand prop that allows us to specify the content to show inside the error message itself. So we're gonna use a couple of different properties with this message component to get an error to display for our users. So let's flip back over to our code editor and set this thing up. First, I'm gonna go up to the top and I'm going to pull in the 
message component from Semantic UI React. Then I'll go down to the render method and we're going to add this thing right above our button component. So right above it, we'll add on message. We're gonna assign the air property to it. The air thing right here is what it gets, what gets it to display as a nice kind of red looking thing, as opposed to like green or gray or anything like that. We'll add on some header text of, oops, just to make sure it's clear that something went wrong. And then our content, which is gonna be the actual air text that gets displayed inside there, will be this dot state dot air message. And then I'll close off the component like so. All right, let's save this and we'll test it out inside the browser. Now, I want you to know that when we test this out, it's not going to work the way we expect. So there's one last little change we need to make to this thing to get it to work the way we expect. But the reason I want us to see the error or see it not work is that this is a very subtle little thing that's gonna go wrong. And I am 100% convinced that you're gonna run into this issue on your own personal projects as well. So I want you to see the error occur and I want you to say, oh, okay, this is how we fix it. So let's go back over to our application. As usual, I'm not gonna really trust the hot module reload and I'm just gonna reload the entire page. Next, I'm going to try to trigger an error. So I want to make sure that an error occurs here. I'll click on create and then on the window that pops up, I'll click on reject. So when I click on reject, well, presumably something went wrong, but I definitely did not see an error message here. So this is the gotcha. Whenever you use the error property on a message with semantic UI, as we're doing right here, the message component is not going to show up by default. So when we use this error property right here, semantic UI understands okay, I get it, this component is used for validation logic or showing an error message. And Semantic UI assumes that you're not always gonna have an error message. Like, think about it. When a user first comes to our form, we don't want to always by default show them this big red box, right? We don't wanna show them a big red box when they first come to the form. Instead, we wanna wait for something to go wrong. And when something goes wrong, then we'll show them this message. So to help you with that behavior, Semantic UI requires you to add a air property to the enclosing form or the parent form that we have right here. So if we add on an air prop like so, so let's add on that air prop and save the file. If we go back over, we'll suddenly see that air message appear. Now in this case, we do have an air message here and it says, okay, it looks like you know user denied transaction signature. So Okay, that definitely works the way we expect. I like that a lot. We'll come back to that in just a second. But first, I wanna show you what happens if we refresh the page and go back to the case where we don't have any error message at all. So if we refresh, we're now in the state where there is no error message, but hey, look at that. This little error window is popping up by default. And we definitely don't want that. So instead, we're gonna add on a little condition to decide whether or not to supply this little error property. In particular, We'll set the air property equal to the string this.state.error message, like so. Remember, by default, this is an empty string. So when our component first loads up, an empty string will be passed to air. And an empty string is interpreted as being falsy. So air will be set to false, and our message will not appear on the screen. Then later on, if an error does occur and some text gets assigned to air message, that's interpreted as being a truthy value. So error will essentially flip over to be true and our message will appear. So let's save this now and we'll test this behavior out inside the browser. So if we go back over, let's do a quick refresh here just to get that error we saw to go away. Now when we do the full refresh right here, you are gonna see an error pop up. And in particular it says, invalid prop error of type string supplied to form, expected Boolean. So we'll talk about the source of this error message in just a second, and we'll put in a very easy fix for it. But first, I want you to notice that we do not see the error message by default. But if we now click on create, and then click on reject, now that error message pops up exactly as we would hope it would. All right, so now let's come back to this error message down here. So it says that we are passing in a string for the property air, but it was expecting to see a Boolean. 
and that's not a big deal. So essentially, it's just complaining and saying, hey, look, you passed in a string right here for error. It shouldn't be a string. It should be either true or it should be false, one or the other. But this is JavaScript. You know, we can very easily coerce values between different types. So there's a nice little trick for turning a string like this into its equivalent Boolean value. We can put down two exclamations like this right here. The first exclamation is going to take this value and flip it into the opposite value as its Boolean form. And then the next one you see right here will flip it back. Now I'm sure that's really confusing, so let's just go over to the terminal and I'll give you some quick examples of it. So if we take, say, exclamation truthy value, that gives us back false. And then the second exclamation will turn it into true. So truthy value is a true value. And so if we turn this into a Boolean, I would want it to be true. And that's exactly what these two exclamations do. Likewise, if we did exclamation, exclamation, empty string, it goes to false. And that's exactly what we want because an empty string is a falsy value. So again, that exclamation, exclamation is just a little trick to turn a string into its equivalent Boolean value. All right, so let's now save this and we'll do one final test just to make sure everything works. Okay, so I'm gonna do a full refresh again just to reset our component state. And I'll enter in, well, actually I'm not gonna enter anything. I'll just click on create and I'll reject it. And so our user gets a really nice error message that tells them exactly why this just failed. Likewise, if we enter in some dummy input in here and click on create, it tells us, again, something went wrong here. Now, this is the case in which I had said, you know, maybe the error message is not plain English, and maybe it doesn't really tell our users directly what happens or what went wrong, but at least this is saying something about the fact that we're not gonna process their transaction. So this is not the best thing in the world, it's not the best error message, but it's way, way, way better than showing nothing at all. And I think maybe at the end of the day, our users might be able to figure out like, you know, see the text invalid number value, maybe they would eventually figure out like, oh, okay, I get it. I need to put like a number in here, like so. So at the end of the day, like I said, it's just better than nothing. All right, so I think this looks good as far as form validation goes, but there's one last thing I wanna work on. I wanna make sure that whenever we submit a transaction, we start up some spinner or something like that to tell our users that we're doing a little bit of work. So let's take care of that spinner in the next video.